look, there was a story that we didn't get to that I'm going to have to read. There was a lady who did potlucks for a church. You know, she's the elderly lady that has been cooking for years. So one lady in the church decided to go help her. So off we go to the kitchen. She grabs a round flour sifter strainer and about 10 pounds, so five kilos about, of frozen strawberries. Then we head to the bathroom. <laughs> she scrubbed that bad boy. I'm, think, I'm hoping that's the toilet. Tosses the strainer in and then throws all 10 pounds of red goop in, followed by a solid 10 flushes and a soak. <laughs> Apparently, that's how you defrost them and clean them really quickly. Oh, yeah. Remember so, that commercial that they used to have the guy on the, in the little gondola? And the the toilet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Toilet bowl. I do. How do we forget that? <laughs> Good day, you all, and welcome to episode 52 Pot Luck. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Actually, there was a film from High Times Magazine called Potluck of Something, but I didn't put that in here because it's a different potluck. Yeah. Hello, Phil. Hello. It's a bit of a strange day today. Yeah, it's always strange. It is always it's strange. strange. We... This is like uh, like one of those psychedelic songs, you know. <laughs> I can't think. There is a thing, a strange days or something. Yes. Oh, door songs. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, which my dad wouldn't let me listen to because he wrong. thought I'd become a drug addict if I listened to the doors. He was wrong. But now let's talk about this. It's what is a potluck? It is a situation in which one must take a chance that whatever is available will prove to be good or acceptable. Which... Well, taking a chance of the people bringing it or the people in <laughs> consuming it. That, that's probably, it's a double chance. It's a double chance. That's right. So a potluck mm -hmm. is a communal gathering where each guest contributes a different, often homemade dish of food to share, yeah. which is way popular back at home. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and what you don't like is like when you do something like that and somebody brings something that's store brought. What's the matter? Couldn't you do yeah, something? Yeah, couldn't you figure that out? Yeah, yeah. Or at least fake it and put it on a new plate. It's when they take like the Costco cover off. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> So, you know, we often, both working back in the States, we would be involved in potlucks. Mm. My mom worked for the government, so that it was like a whole committee of potlucks. And um, I was talking with two people that we work with, Jennifer and Adam, and we're trying to think of, I used to bring a pretzel salad. Okay, so you crunch up pretzels and put them in Pretzels and butter, like you're making a graham cracker crust. Yeah. And then you do this cream cheese Huh. Cheesecakey thing, but it's covered with jello. <laughs> or can we have a week without jello? No, we can't because we're American <laughs> and that's what we do. And Jennifer had a frightening, remember, frightened look on her face, remembering ambrosia. Mm. I think everybody had that. Yes, well, yeah, it was absolutely. so popular and it's so refreshing. I like it. Jennifer yeah. was like, mm, but I think we should make it again. Um, seven layer salad yeah. and one of the favorites, you know, meatballs with the sauce. That's made with a bottle of ketchup or chili sauce or cocktail sauce and some jelly, grape, currant, apple. Put that sucker in a crock pot, some meatballs in it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Sticky and sweet and sour. And that is exactly yeah. right. That's what we were saying before. Like, you know, you used to go to get the sweet and sour pork. Mm -hmm. It had that bright orange color, which is not a natural good color at all. <laughs> no, God did it's not like make that color in nature. <laughs> Okay, Barbara, do you got the dustbin out? We're going to do some housekeeping. <laughs> I've got that and I've got my headscarf on so I don't mess up my curls. Yeah. So first uh, bit of housekeeping is the listener discount logo. Yes, it's purple. It's purple. It's oh, purple. Like the queen likes purple. It's royal. Yes, it is royal. <laughs> and the secret code for this month is for the month of September is harvest. Harvest moon. Like a moon, yes. Yes, beautiful. Don't moon anybody, but it's harvest moon. <laughs> I have a visual I don't need. And don't forget, if you need to uh, share some chit-chat with us, uh, give us some grief or whatever, we're available at podcasts at usafoods.com.au. Just so, keep those cards and letters coming that's in. That's right. Send it in. Yeah. Now, we have also, oh, this is a bit sad news. What's we, happened? We're losing something. What? Not Our my minds? mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the first thing that comes to mind. That's right. Wait, what, what was that that I was saying? No. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 
Nat Nosh. We got a replacement for Nat Nosh. Oh, because we, you know, we've lapped it. We lapped it. That's right. Oh. So it's we'll like be- a dog. <laughs> So we will be talking about what's going in that place. Yeah. Now, today's show, how did it all start? Potluck we're talking about. Yes, that's it, potluck. Mm. Um, good and bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my favorite, office food horror stories. Sure, it is uh, office foods and picnics and everybody Everyone else has else, a horror yes. story. Uh, eating someone else's prepared food. Yeah. Potluck etiquette, mm-hmm. themes. Uh, that's evidently a big thing now. People yeah. want a theme. And funeral potatoes. That's a theme. What, funerals? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, Everybody dressed have... in black. and uh, That's yeah. right. <laughs> say nice things about the person that you yeah. didn't really like, but we yeah. say it nice now. And do you know there's even a series of novels revolving around potlucks? Did you read them? No, because I get too much. Maybe I, it's just called potluck marvels. Maybe no, it's, you have to solve a mystery or uh, something happens. No, no, no. I'm too busy reading my blood and gore that I do. Okay, so it's not about somebody's love life or anything. No, 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 no. Not really. <laughs> sort of like very Midwestern sort mm. of cozy. Uh, fun fact number one. Yeah. In 2011. In Minnesota. In Minnesota, where they'd have hot dishes. Yeah. Uh, the Minnesota State Legislature passed the church lady law. Not oh, the how law. sweet. <laughs> Could it be Satan? <laughs> um, exempting faith-based groups from health inspections as long as one person was in charge of food preparation. Well, you know, they get everything blessed anyway. That's right. The minister, the priest, the rabbi, whatever. Yeah. yeah give and you a, know, put a blessing, kiss it up to God. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Now, I will... I'll probably absolutely go against what I'm saying now later on in the show. But, you know, there's a lot of people that have been cooking for a lot of years, and most of them know how not to kill people that they're well, eating. Well, yeah, the family's still alive, except right. for, you know, a few uncles. <laughs> well, that, that one woman, her husbands keep dying. It's very tragic. I don't know about that. And uh, They ate the evidence. <laughs> but uh, Arizona has yeah. a different uh, take on this. Oh, they're illegal. They are, well... They were. So the potlucks are illegal in Arizona. If you get caught hosting one, yeah. you can get a fine or possibly even arrested. <laughs> Is this this had to do with the, the lockdowns that we are going through here in Victoria and anything? No, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. It um it's because of food preparation laws and all that. But in 2016, it was reversed. Oh. So my earlier Research showed one thing, but 2016, you can now have one without fear of being arrested. Although some people bring dishes that they should be arrested for, but that's still right. And then we got our presidential one with the Carters, the the Carter family. The Carter family. Um, Do you know Jimmy Carter, uh, probably up until recently, he was mowing the lawn for his local church. Oh, yeah. He's just a a nice Regular guy, building houses for people. That's right. And I don't see George Bush doing that. No, no, or Bill Clinton, he might be mowing. No, I no go we're down. not talking. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. So um, when I was reading this article. Well, I had to get Democrats and Republicans I, in on that one. That's right. Thank you very much. Equal opportunity. Now, except there's two Democrats to one Republican. We can touch back later. Yeah. Um, so the Carters attend their local church where Jimmy often gives a sermon um, and they do Sunday school. And whenever there's a big event, like a wedding or a funeral, they always bring a dish yep. for the church potluck. I like enough he has to bring a dish for the, uh, uh, the secret service because he still has secret service people hanging around him. Well, you know, I would say they'd probably be well fed and looked after. I uh, would think so. There'd be some big boys there. Didn't his mother live to be? Yeah, like 103. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that I thought I just you know I don't even go looking for a presidential well, he's fact. He's ninety plus. Me. I don't know how many. And pluses. he's beaten brain cancer and you yeah. know falls and all of that. He is quite incredible. Yeah. Okay, so that lines up part one, and we'll be back with more. <laughs> Here we go. We're back. Oh, we're back. You had to poke me, wake me up. <laughs> yes. All uh, right. Now we're talking about potluck today. Yes. And how did it all start? Well, you know, look, we can go back to England, but forget that. Ah. American. We talked about that last week when we're throwing we throwing the tea overboard. That's right. Yeah. No, it started off with the pioneers and barn raisings, mm-hmm. which still happen 
in you know, Pennsylvania. Yeah, it still happens Dutch. in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. So and Jimmy Carter, you just talking about Jimmy Carter before? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it Georgia. happens. He still does that. Yeah. Well, I think he does, but he was doing it for yeah, a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Habitat for Humanity. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's sort of just a nice way for communities to be together and share and big deals and, yeah. you know, many hands make light work. Yeah. And you got, you know, and it's, people bring uh, in certain parts of the country, you know, they don't have a catered wedding because they That's right. know, don't have the money and things like that. So people bring food to have it at the party in the church hall and harvest. We just started that for harvest time. Yeah, this absolutely. Is our, it's Thanksgiving. It, well, harvest is our what the word of the of that, the month. Oh, it is that's too. Right. That's yeah, right. So I couldn't get it out. Uh, that's all right. Ah. We remember you're losing your mind. I know. I lost uh, it. <laughs> Did you find it somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you think about it, Thanksgiving was probably the first potluck. That's true. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> could you have the Indians bring the uh, cornbread, please? I don't think they'll bring the cornbread. They, well, they, the they were the ones that did with the corn. I mean, well, they, they introduced they the corn. They introduced Americans yeah. to corn. Oh, I, I get that. Yeah, the, they probably had some type of bread or you know, that they made from dried corn. They'll bring the turkey and mm. we'll bring the smallpox. That's sort of how yeah. <laughs> So now also during shortages, so during the Great Depression and, you know, wartime, People shared what they had yeah. with each other. So, and that's an important thing and, and brings communities together. I mean, now we kind of don't see each other. We don't have the block parties and things that we used to have no. as much. Well, we can't even go out of the house most no. of the time. No, that's right. And then in the 40s and 50s, they really came into their own potlucks where, you know, it was a time to entertain and to have dinner. When, rather than having a dinner party. Yeah. It was everyone brings something. Awesome. It's so and easy. Try it. yeah. Absolutely. You take your dirty plates home with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a trick. Maybe that's why we like paper plates. Paper plates. Yeah. Because you just one garbage bag at the end, everything in, everything take your in, plates home. Done. Bye. Yeah. You're out of here. And um it also has been very popular in office. We I just remembered we had a potluck Thanksgiving a few years ago, remember? We did? We did. I brought pies. Oh, okay. But what everyone, did I bring? I probably didn't bring anything because Jeanette probably brought it. Jeanette did bring it. Yeah. That's right. Um, but why don't you just act like you know what you did? Like yeah, all I the know. husbands do at Christmas. Oh, that's what we got yeah, you. Yes, yes, I yes, know. Yes, yes, yes. I remember that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yes, Brennan. But you know, we when I worked for uh, Irving Trust Company, yeah. Which is now Bank of Bank of New York, it was, and now it's uh, some something else. They got bought out three times. But we used to work. Uh, the midnight shift, so midnight right. to eight in the morning. So, and we have to work on holidays, including like you know Christmas and uh, New Year's Eve yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, so we used to do that all the time, and everybody. And the, the thing was, you had to bring something from your own background, from your own nationality. Oh, see, there's, there's and the was, theme. Oh, we had like everything and anything. You could, it was a smorgasbord. <laughs> well, actually, my mom has a few suggestions. She like she with the government things like they would have potlucks all the time at the depot and she said here i used she gave me everything she used to bring from tamale pie on but she said um i have also made lumpia and pancit which are two filipino dishes she goes only if i knew they'd be eaten right away Mm. like she's very picky about what she brought and you know all that sort of thing but it bring it does bring people all around the table together in the lunchroom. Yeah. And, you know, you're sitting there, you might be chatting with someone. and and, and But it gets you, you know, like when you do it like at work, when you got a lot of different people from a wide variety, yeah. you know, it, it just gives you an opportunity to try things that are different. Like even with ours and we did it with, with the bank, you know, I would bring Italian food and, mm. you know, uh, Ozzy would bring Cuban food. And, yep. You know, and uh, we had Fabian. He used to bring uh, uh, Filipino food. Yep. Yeah. Like, wow. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, especially if you like to eat. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. we both know that we both like to eat. Yes. Um, now, and we're also going to be talking about the good and bad points. And the uh, disgusting. And the disgusting. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the very ugly. So, you know, the first thing that's good, let's go to the good point. It's easy. Yeah. You Get know, a bunch you, of friends. Hey, bring something. You bring the salad. You bring this. You bring, that's I mean, right. we still that even with our my family here in Australia. You know, when it's, you know, so who's ever organized, they usually cook the meats yep. and everybody else brings, who's bring salad suits, brings desserts, who brings, you know, and then you, you always have something of too many, but it all goes. It all, we do that um, for New Year's Day every year and it's, it's Why don't you great. do it for Thanksgiving? 
Because I like my Thanksgiving. I know that's a sore point. The way I like my Thanksgiving, and yeah. I still have it on a Thursday, and just leave me alone. Okay. Um, and you like people that come? No, no, okay, I'm not going. But... Stop it, and be no. Nope, but he comes back okay. twice. All right, and the, the cost and the time and the prep is all shared among yeah. people. Mm-hmm. You can show off. Yeah, like, like what made, you do really good. Like yeah. right now, I do pizzas really good. You do, and it's so nice and focaccia when yeah. you bring that into work. We have our own little mini potluck sometimes. Yes. <laughs> and um, you get to try new things and um, share your favorite thing. Like you've never tried this before. Yeah. Try it. Try it. Oh, so good. Now, it can be painful. <laughs> oh, yeah, because everybody has allergies now. And it's like. So they're sensitive. <laughs> we're all very sensitive. Oh. Like when I was talking about Debbie Downer the other day. <laughs> R- uh, Ralph. Yeah, Ralph and Wendy Weiner. No, I've got diverticulitis. So, I can't eat that, Wendy. I'm lactose intolerant. Yeah. I'm gluten intolerant. I'm people intolerant. Um, yeah. yeah. Get out of my face. And so we have a few of that. We've got a vegan. We've got a vegetarian. We've got some lactose intolerant people. Yep. Um, so that bit can be a little bit hard. But look, my cousin, who is the first full-on vegetarian I knew, like from the 60s, she made lentil loaf in the shape of a turkey. Mm-hmm. But at it was really nice because at Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever, she would also bring something enough for all of us to have that was that she could safely eat and she enjoyed. And yeah. she got to share a bit of that yeah, as that well. Yeah, that was showing up. It was really good, but the lentil loaf just never took me. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the other thing is you kind of – it's a trust issue there. Uh, yeah, that they do have some type of sanitation skills. Yeah, that they're washing their, yeah, washing their hands. Yeah, washing hands. Or not licking the, tasting and putting the spoon back in. And, mm. Anyway. And cross contaminating things. Yeah. Mm. So that brings us to our next topic Office food horror stories. <laughs> ah! Right. <laughs> um, yeah, now we have a couple. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll get you going. So your first one you got to talk about. I'm going to let you talk about I'll it. I'll do that one. So, it's the worst desk salad ever. So just imagine this. It's potluck day. Usually what you do is you do everything in the morning or the night before, and you bring it in the dish. You put it down, take the saran wrap yep. off, and then it's done. Yep. But I'm quoting this uh, contributor. We had a potluck one day, and my coworker decided to bring a salad. So that day, instead of bringing in a pre-made salad, she brought in a head of iceberg lettuce and some grape tomatoes. Sounds like it needs more anyway. There's a few yeah. problems. She then takes a knife from her drawer in the desk, puts the head of lettuce With directly- a knife or a letter opener. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. She then puts the head of lettuce directly onto her desktop, cuts it up, and puts it in the bowl. She probably used the the uh, you know yeah, the, the calendar the calendar and then scooped it up with that yeah and, just yeah, chucked it. <laughs> um, now a we, little link won't hurt. You. It was she's like we had a kitchen at work, but she didn't use it. <laughs> the knife she used it all the time and would just wipe it off with a paper towel before putting it back into her desk. Yeah, yeah no one had salad that day. <laughs> if they did, they went to the toilet a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> or that's when you know, and they're looking at you, and you take a little bit. Yeah. And then you hide it underneath oh, yeah. something else. Camouflage. So you just sort of it takes you back to when you were a kid. And now um, there's also the this. unsanitary watermelon preparation. How could that be? Let me tell you. Oh. When you just think it can't be true, then it is. <laughs> So many years, this is another contributor. Many years ago, my workmate had a potluck lunch or my work had a potluck lunch. I stopped into the bathroom before heading to lunch, hopefully to wash your hands. It's starting to remind me of another old TV show. Believe it or not. (laughs) I found two of my coworkers cutting up fruit on the bathroom counter for their watermelon fruit bowl. It was so incredibly disgusting, not to mention insanitary. I alerted my supervisor, and the fruit bowl never made it to the potluck. I never looked at a watermelon bowl the same way again. Mm, Out of the toilet, onto the plate. And (laughs) there was one more that I mentioned earlier. Yes. Right? Well, Defrosting the strawberries? Oh, no, I'm going to save that for the church one. (laughs) Oh, okay. But this is a co-worker. So a woman, uh, a co-worker... Not any of ours. This is story time. Got her. There's a communal chocolate cake, someone's birthday. Yeah. Uh, she got her car key, 
she cut a piece off with her car key and then <laughs> she would, right. and she licked her car key and just put it back in her pocket hmm. off eating cake. well she didn't want to have any chocolate residue in her pocket and that's right and she didn't want to waste anything like yeah. you know water washing a knife or you know yeah whatever but and also what has she licked off that night that fork or the yeah. Well, talking King about the letters it. in the office and everything, and, yes. and our producer here just yes. get a flash. Did it? Did it? Did it? It just came in, and it reminded us of Kramer from Seinfeld. Oh. In when he had that that nuclear shower, yes. yeah, and he was washing the letters in the shower. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, I wouldn't eat anything Kramer brought to a potluck. Oh my god! <laughs> He right. had a few food jobs. He had the job in the pizza place, or no, oh, the pizza place. Remember, he put the pennies, or he put something in the oven, uh, or was it George? Somebody went put stuff in the oven and burnt it. He burnt his shirt. Or something. I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, because he wanted everything to be nice when you put it on, especially when it's winter time. You put it on, it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I think we should tell the strawberry story now. Let's not save it. Oh, no, let them wait. Okay, we'll let them wait. Okay. No, let's get to etiquette. First of all, without being said, <sighs> wash your damn hands and don't cut things up in the bathroom. <laughs> bathroom is not a place for food preparation. Yeah. Okay, potluck like etiquette. Bring a dish. So when you bring your dish, mm-hmm. you don't want to have to do the, you just, it's ready to go. You don't have to... Yeah, you unwrap it. And that's it's it. It's all prepared. It looks nice. That's right. Might have shifted a bit in the car. So bring everything you need to serve it. So if it takes tongs or a spoon, bring that too. Um, for the guy that works in the parts department, condiments do not count as a dish. So you can't bring <laughs> a mustard and put it down and go, I brought my thing for the for that. Avoid the triple S. Stinky, spicy, and strange. Yes. You want to eat? Well, spicy. A lot of people like spicy. No. Well, I think, yes. No. If this is the Midwestern group, maybe not. Yeah. Depending but on what you not overly found, spicy. That's right. Or or maybe put a little seasoning or hot sauce next to it to add it. But you don't want to be the person when they go, do you know what Phil brought? What's yeah. that? And do not loudly proclaim that a dish is, uh, has, uh, someone has brought is not quite up to par. Well, maybe the person is not up to par. Well, you know, like say, you know, you're working in, like you worked at the dealerships, yeah. right? So the one of the guys in the back that just servicing, you know, yeah. the cars and all that, and his hands are always dirty. Yes, right. Yeah. You know, I like a little oil on my salad, but not but, <laughs> motor oil. <laughs> not whatever the weights are. Uh, yes. No, we don't want that. Yeah, so, 10W40 on uh, <laughs> yes. That's right. I don't need that. Yeah. And now. So those are just like your basic rules. And usually you try to ask around and go, I'm going to bring a macaroni salad. Yeah. Oh, I was going to, I'll bring potato. Well, you need somebody to coordinate it. Yeah, you I do. Mean, that, that's always the case. It's usually the person that's throwing the thing, saying, we're going to do potluck. Do you mind bringing either, would you want, you know, give them a choice until yep. you run out of choices as you go down the list of what they want to bring. That's you want to bring a hot dish? Do you want to bring a main? Do you want to bring salad? Do you want to bring uh vegetables you know what do you want to bring actually we have a joke with our um uh new year's day one whoever gets asked to bring bread it's yeah. like what you don't trust my cooking like why do i why why do i get the bread what's well, going on yeah then they bring the uh the white dollar you know, 49 <laughs> loaf yeah, the- uh, no. <laughs> now so this brings us this might make it easier yeah themes so you did your theme where someone had to bring everything from yeah, from the nationality. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a few of these. I read them all. Some of them you might have to guess, and let's just see how we go. Okay. And there's one that's good. Restaurants to- recreation. So that means that you would make a pollo loco chicken. Or your friend that used to bring Popeye's chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's right. And, and they call it Candace's chicken. Candace's and then chi- Tony Cruz got on to him and said, Bruce, that ain't Candace's chicken. <laughs> we know where that comes from. <laughs> Yeah, so you can make Marie Callender's pie or et cetera. Mm-hmm. And family favorite favorites, which is sort of the stuff that you um, grew up with. Yeah, I could think of a bunch. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, even you get the family together, you know, somebody makes old Fra- Aunt Frances's chicken liver salad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, all of that. My mom's, uh, I love my mom's corned beef. Actually, I love my mom's pot roast. Like, mm, you, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. 
pulled pork. Yeah, my mom and dad, their pot roast was good too. Oh, there's something magical about it. It's healing. Oh, Ricky Cookie. Ricky Cookie. So everyone makes a recipe they've never tried before. Oh, there's just, a bunch of failures. <laughs> I was going to say, that's pretty good if everyone, you know, if everyone involved can yeah, cook. cook. <laughs> exactly. And uh, throwback night. Bring food that reminds you of your childhood. Oh. Mac and cheese. I never had mac and cheese as a kid. Wasn't it? Uh, it just wasn't there. Well, but you didn't have to have beautiful pastas. You yeah. didn't have to have the, the blue box. Mm-hmm. I had mac and cheese. And, you know, my grandmother used to put, she'd grate fresh white bread and then fry it in butter Ooh. and then put it on top. That's what I would bring. I, I like actually on a, just instead of butter. Like after you do the bacon, yeah, and then oh. fry the bait the bread into the bacon fat. Oh, we need so to... tasty, but God, you wonder about what's where your cholesterol levels going. Uh, don't just enjoy it. Think yeah. about it later when the doctor yells at you. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, you know, people might want hot dogs, or people might want, you know, our group of kids might want to bring chicken nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. Frank and beans. Frank and beans. Now, this is the one I'm highly concerned about. A leftover grub. So that's a theme night. That's a theme. And so it, anything left over in your refrigerator that doesn't have anything growing out of it, it's it's fair game. Yeah, there's only two rules, which which concern me. Yeah. Uh, food cannot be expired. And the food has to be for humans. Dog, Dog food. <laughs> so so what were people doing that they had to make that rule? <laughs> I'm very concerned. Well, you gotta bring something for the dog if you bring the dog along. Which could be which could bring you to your next theme, which is last meal. <laughs> you dog food? I don't think so. No. The leftover one. Yeah. So everyone brings a dish starting with the letter that their last name starts with or. Oh, last meal. Not, not like if you're in prison and what's your last meal request. Well, it doesn't have to be prison. It's just like, if you know this is going to be my last meal, yeah. what is it? Or your last name. So Your last name. Okay. So like mine starts with a B? Yeah. Bread? <laughs> uh, yeah, see, now you can't. Yeah. So I'm the same with K. What would I. Krispy Kremes. No, that's. Oh, well, hey. Yeah. That starts with a K, right? That does start with a K. There you go. Mm. <laughs> Crumpets. Yeah. No, that's a C. No, that is a C. Yeah, uh, yeah see, no, we can't think of it straight, so you have to put some thought into that one. Yeah. Um, going green, which mm. is a veggie only. Yeah. And then the signature dish. Yes. So that's a signature like a one of those chefs guys, right? What? Yeah. So everyone knows Phil yeah. makes the best. Oh, okay. So you don't have to be a chef that you got to imitate. No, no. It's your, your own signature. Your own. So my signature dish would be. I got be, too many. You do. You'd have to pick what you'd go. A savory. Uh, so what would be your appetizer? Oh, okay. What would be your savory? What yeah. would be your sweet? Well, you pick. I'll do the dessert. Oh, now? Yeah, just tell me. What is your signature, one of your many signature dishes? God, I don't know. I guess so many of them. Um, you make a damn like, good soup. The soup, yeah. Like my uh, my soup with the lentils and, oh, the, so good. Uh, and the barley in it, the barley and beef and beef and barley soup that I make. Yes, yeah. I love that. I didn't do that many this year. I did uh, like twice. We're all a bit flat this year. Yeah. It wasn't the usual sort of fun cooking thing. But I'm into, thing. into the pizza right now. Oh. Are we? Uh, yes, that yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yes. So and now, did, now I'm going the next step. What? I'm going one step beyond. <gasps> Remember that show? Yes. <laughs> one step beyond. So uh, I'm changing the flour. Oh, what are you doing now? So now I'm using double zero. Oh, Ooh, from Italy. Oh, nice, mm. fancy pizza. Mm. I used to the California Pizza Kitchen used to do a really nice, like a whole wheaty. It was like honey wheat. Yeah. Which was really well, nice. Well, I did a sourdough because yeah. you know, I made sourdough mix. It took oh, nice. two weeks to do the starter. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did a sourdough. Uh, it tasted just like the regular ones. I don't know. It didn't taste much different. It doesn't puff up as much. No. You know, it's just firmer. I think sometimes it depends where, where the topping marries with yeah. it too. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that play with, with the dough. And uh, so... I use the KitchenAid to mix mm-hmm. it with, but then it's how you get the yeast started. Yep. And unfortunately enough, I'm able to get fresh yeast instead of that powdered stuff. Yes. Uh, it's a bit more reliable, I think. Yep. Uh, blooms very nicely. And then there's different ways. One is like you do all the flour and you comes out looking like a uh, you know, one of those reggae guys with their <laughs> hair, you know? 
<laughs> like braids. Yes. So, and then you let that sit for like two hours just to absorb all the moisture into into the, the dough. Yeah. So into the front of flour and, you know, and all the moisture. And then you put it in the machine. Okay. Okay, to knead it. So that's, you know, to get it to start. Yeah, so you're getting it ready properly. Yeah. I mean, the other way is, you know, you get it and you, I put it all together, let it sit, let it rise and bring it down again and, yep. and, and mix it. You know. so I'm I mean, very lucky because sometimes I get dough brought to me yeah. and I'll do the same. And I made focaccia and I made pizza. Yeah, yeah you got to let it rise in yep. the pan if you really want it light, you know. But mm. the thing with the pizza oven, it cooks at such a high temperature and the flame coming above it, it just puffs it right up. Like I, I was playing around trying to do something else and I put one in. It came out like I uh, put like a flat piece of uh, dough in there yeah. with nothing on it and thinking that, okay, I'm going to stop because I wanted to play around with just doing a base, put them in the freezer. And then, yeah. yeah. So the first one I did came out like a pita. Oh, <laughs> oh very nice. <laughs> yes. It's good when you can eat your experiments and they're very good. Yeah. I had Kumi there that day too and he ate some of it too. <laughs> Now, this is bringing up another thing. If you could have a pizza party potluck. Mm-hmm. So we're, we all brought our toppings. Yeah, you all bring your toppings and I'll do the best. And you do it. Is sounds that like, something that you want to plan on? It sounds like we should book that in okay. because, mm-hmm. you know, I, it's a win-win for me. Um, <clears throat> mine probably would be a dessert of some sort because I love making them. Oh, yeah. You like doing cakes and cookies I and brownies. love that. And... Yeah. So mine would probably be my brownies. I'd yeah. say be my signature. Yeah. See, I'm not a baker. So that's, you know, like not a sweet baker, like cakes and all that. I don't, I, don't, I like to eat them. Yes. Uh, I don't, nothing thrills me about making them. <laughs> so I, I, I'm a, I'm a potluck guy. When I open the refrigerator, what am I going to do? It's like ready, steady, cook. Yeah, I ready, mean, steady, like, cook. Yeah. This is what I got. So like uh, the other day, Jeanette made a, a vegetable. So she uh, she was straining spinach or frozen spinach mm-hmm. to make something else, and she didn't make it. So she put it in a pan, sauteed it down a bit and uh, with some onions and mushrooms. Yeah. So I tasted need a little bit more. Right. Okay. So what it needed basically was like either some garlic salt or celery. It needed, needed some sodium yep. into it. A hit. So I did that. But I had left over a half a packet, you know, those instant rice things. Yes. You know, like people don't like making rice or you want to make rice in a hurry. So I bought this one and it was uh, it was flavored. And there's so many different flavors. You go from Mexican to you know, Mideastern and stuff. This yep. had a little bit more of a Mideastern taste to it. Mm-hmm. And I had a half a packet. And I put that into the ri- into the spinach and all that. So I had like a pilaf. That's beautiful. And it, was, and it came out really tasty. Oh, yeah. See, that's fun to experiment yeah. and do that. Like it, it, but, you know, as long as you know what things go together with what, then you can start saying, yeah, I got this. No, that goes, that tastes good with that. It's like peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and bacon. <laughs> you know, I know I got bacon. Oh, and I got peanut butter. Well, they go good together, you know. <laughs> Did you ever want? And then if you had those mandarin oranges we're talking about and put that together, well, that would go. They could, yeah. See, that's how I think. So, I know that peanut butter tastes good, and I know that they, you put the citrus into it would be really complement it. And then with the bacon, you got it all. <laughs> all right, now, what do we put it on? I don't know. But that that flavor combination of those three will be really good. Yes. Well, peanut butter and bacon are yeah, amazing. And, it's, and then mandarin orange or any or a marmalade. Any marmalade. marmalade into I'll go it. marmalade. Yeah. Well, or or candied yeah, like. Depend- a- that's how, how moist you want it. Yeah. You know, if you want it dry for toast, you have to, then you put the marmalade. See, now this is a good idea for us here. This yeah. is not a good idea for a potluck idea. Well, this is my potluck. I know, but it's great. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. And, and I'm lucky. Because I didn't have potluck as a kid. I didn't have potluck till I, you know, I went to Kansas for the first time. Well, that's what I think. It's just so very, that's, uh, maybe that's why there's all those casseroles. Yeah. Because that's the easiest thing Easy, to bring. And, and it's, yeah, it's stable. Yeah. Although California, we had lots of salads. Like there were lots and lots and lots. It's California, of lots. I know. They got experience. But like, if someone came in with a tray of sushi and it wasn't homemade sushi, we just yeah. go. Yeah, not many people make sushi. No, at home. well, some did because we had a lot of Japanese people. Yeah, but it just all depended. Uh, now, so okay, we'll go so back to it. So we got the. Uh, Five ingredients. Five or ingredients. Or less. That's like a TV that's show. What, that's almost like what you're talking about now. You that would be perfect for you. Yeah. And uh, I like this one because garlic is life. Keep the yeah. vampires away. Every okay. dish has to have garlic. 
Ex- I'm sure you could you used to do something with dessert. It's got to be yeah, some dessert. Yeah, because the Gilroy Garlic Festival, my yeah. mother brought back these lovely chocolates. With garlic. With garlic. Ooh. And um, she had an ice cream with it too. So you could. But as you roast garlic, it goes sweet, just like an onion. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Or you can make the um, what's the one with like a hundred clove of garlic chicken? Yeah. You could do um. Well, you were talking pizza. about desserts, but I'm just thinking about like you know, quince uh, jam that you get yep. that you put on cheese and all that. Mm-hmm. Put some garlic into that. Ooh. Well, yeah, because oh yeah, okay, I like that one. Spanish tapas. Mm-hmm. Do that. A lot of people probably looking at. A whole bunch of little bitty foods. Little bitty foods. Comfort food. Oh, comfort. Yeah. Mashed everything. Like, <laughs> fry everything. Fun. Fry everything. Paula Dean would like that one. She'd yeah. be right in there. Fry Butter, it. fried. Yeah. Cheesecake. Yeah. Do Any, fry- anything that has more than 250 calories per serve. <laughs> or now there's a no cooking one. Yeah. So just. Well, Jello is like no cooking. That's Any exactly right. Water. I mean, is that considered cooking? Nah, that's not considered cooking. Or uh, you could just. What color food? Yeah, I read about that. Someone accidentally had a one color food because all the Vanilla people brought, yeah, brought <laughs> cornbread and corn pudding and uh, something anything. else was all yellow. The whole table yeah. was yellow. But now they tell you the more colors you eat, the you eat more the, healthy you are. You have to eat the rainbow. Yes. Okay, so one of the most popular. Is this a theme also? No. Well, it yes. It could be. <laughs> so the funeral. So often, what happens? Someone passes away, and what's the first thing you want to do? You want to just take a dish over. Oh, okay. You know, someone's just like, I'll just drop something off. But then, like in The Sopranos, we were talking about this yeah. because they, they went to a lot of funerals <laughs> and they went over to the grieving person this and they this... always had a, a whole dish or a platter or something. That's exactly right. Yeah. So often, there's, you know, it's a sad time. People aren't up for catering. Again, it goes back to Tony Cruz, quote unquote. <laughs> yep. When things are bad. You eat good. I love that quote. Yeah. We should make merchandise with that on it. Yeah. We should. Especially now. <laughs> and it's right. Tony Cruz. Yeah. We'll give him. And I'll send him a shirt. Yeah, but we'll give him a cut. <laughs> Just joking, Tony. Um, But so people, you know, your community looked after you. So you go to the wake after the funeral. Well, in some places, the funeral was sort of almost in the home because the, you know, family member was in the home until, yeah. you know, and you do that and you want, you know, and that. You're loving someone with your food, except I'm going to read you the ingredients of funeral potatoes because it should be, like you said earlier, just picking when the next person's going to kick the bucket because- But I mean, that could be a, a theme party too. Let's Who's dress next? up like everybody dresses in black, you know? Yeah, well, but, they but should. If you happen to Melbourne, they do that anyway. <laughs> That's right. So this has salt, a stick of butter, um- a big bag of um, shredded hash browns, onion, flour, milk would be full cream, two cups chicken broth, although it says low sodium. What's the point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kosher salt. Well, yeah, but, yeah. If you're gonna, then you wouldn't need a kosher salt. That's be, right. You need, need salt if you put regular. Black pepper, uh, mo- a cup and a half of Monterey Jack cheese, a cup of sour cream, a half a cup of grated sharp cheddar, two cups kettle cooked potato chips. Mm. And a quarter cup of grated parma. So you see, yeah. this is, you need a defibrillator <laughs> served next to it. As I said before, when we were talking and going over everything, right? Yeah. So when you go to a wedding, the bride throws the bouquet out. Yes. And the next person, you know, is going to be the bride. The right. next bride. This is like, well, you eat this. Well, see, it's going to be the next person who dies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is true. Yeah, brings on that old Kodiak. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go back to uh, Sanford and Son. Elizabeth. Elizabeth oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, potlucks are like, a, it's a comforting sort of thing because yeah. it's full of comfort food. There is even, you know, these novels and it's it's a series of novels called The Women of the Potluck Catering Club. So the author is um, so the one of the novels is a taste of fame. The author is Eva Marie Everson, um, and it's just a cozy yeah. mystery, light read, beach read. But I thought this is going to be the next reality show. I could, hey, why don't we do that? We could, yeah, and then sell it to Channel Nine. <laughs> okay, I know a producer. Oh, Ooh. we got we, we're already we're ready. Um. So the book, A Taste of Fame, serves up the perfect blend of humor, misadventure, and mouth-watering recipes. 
fans, new and old, will love this, this exciting show. trip. <laughs> no, well, we don't do that. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, but this show. So we yeah. just get a bunch of contestants in. Okay, yeah. here's your thing. We got to do potluck. Okay, you got a half hour to create a potluck dessert. Here's what you got. Bah, bah, bah. And go. Bump. Isn't that Master Chef, though? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> No, but but they they have you know they have to do it to the theme, so the theme right. this for this one will be funerals, or the theme would be the beach. That that's right. Yeah, so we do the themes, you know. And then we get one super chef like Heston. Imagine what he could do in a half hour. Oh, he'll smoke something. You know, have to... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have earbuds listening yeah. to something. Yes. So where do you get those glasses? I don't know. I don't. You know, every time I go to the optometrist, I'm looking for those big brim glasses. You know. You know. Well, you have to go. What is the most expensive eyeglass that oh. you have in a catalog because you don't even carry it? And yeah. that would be that Heston's would be glasses. There. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, I think we've wrapped that up. We've got okay. a horrible story to tell in a little bit. All right. So we'll wait for that. All right. So we'll be right back, and we'll feature our new segment. Ooh. Still a man. Oh, fat baby back blues. Okay, now we're into our last half. Oh. And we got that new special coming up. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. I see everybody's waiting. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to be? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, give a rundown of the sore hours. Sure. So if you want to come down and visit us, and if you do and you listen and come in and see Ask a Philip Barber are there, we'll say hi. So you can come down to. Depends uh, on our moods. <laughs> well, yeah, you might not want to. <laughs> Uh, 70, Just bring cannolis. <laughs> if you bring cannolis, we'll be running out. Um, 73 Cochrane's Road, Moorabbin. So Monday through Thursday, it is 10 to 5. Friday, it is 10 to 6. Saturday, 10 to 5 again. And Sunday, 11 to 5. And don't forget, uh, stay within the guidelines of the uh, the laws if they're in effect. Yes. And we do also do click and collect. That is right. So if you have, you know, a relative that's in the area, they can get it for you. Yeah. Or if there's something you really want that goes quickly, order online first. Yeah. Do a click and, and collect. And don't forget to use that harvest code because it's good online, online and click and collect, not good in the store. That's but- right. So do that. And then you can come in and still have a browse. Yeah. And we really love it if you could please share the podcast, subscribe, leave um, a review if you like, and you can send us your thoughts yep. and maybe your worst or best potluck experience at podcast at usafoods.com.au. Okay. Now I think we got some letters here. Yes. Now we had, uh, we've got a feedback just for about the uh, Sopranos episode that we did that we both love. <laughs> I'm not letting my wife listen to that because she'll leave. Well, maybe I should let her listen now. (laughs) Yes. Because anyone that's, if you haven't listened, say this is your first one, go back to the Sopranos episode and listen just to the beginning where (laughs) Phil tells a magnificent story. All true. All true. Involving Jeanette having enough. Yeah. And the dog. Rocky. Rocky. Rocky the boxer. (laughs) How do we get that name? (laughs) (laughs) Yo, Rocky. (laughs) Oh. Yes, Rocky. Uh, Rocky's custody, really. I'm thinking we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my my mother thought that that was just priceless. <laughs> and I'm wondering if Jeanette's heard it. I think Jeanette told me the story first. Also, look, there was a story that we didn't get to that I'm going to have to read to you. Um, there was a lady who did potlucks for a church. She was extremely well known as, you know, she's the elderly lady that has been cooking for years. So one lady in the church decided to go help her because it was going to be a big event, yeah. right? So I'm quoting the uh, person now. So she is going to make this dish that needs uh, strawberries to be to do it. So off we go to the kitchen. She grabs a round flour sifter strainer. And about 10 pounds, so five kilos about, of frozen strawberries. Then we head to the bathroom. <laughs> she scrubbed that bad boy. I'm think, I'm hoping that's the toilet. Tosses the strainer in. Now, both Brendan and Phil are going, well, they have more water in the toilets at home. That is far from the point of the story. Yeah. But so she's putting it in the toilet bowl and then throws all 10 pounds of red goop in. 
followed by a solid, this is important if you're going to clean your strawberries in the toilet, 10 flushes and a soak. (laughs) Apparently, that's how you defrost them and clean them really quickly. Oh, yeah. Mm. Make sure you don't have one of those little tablets floating around in the (laughs) reservoir there, the little blue thing. Yeah, no blue. And it works for all food if you really want to keep it sanitary. Remember so, that commercial that they used to have the guy on the in the little gondola in the, the toilet? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> toilet I do. How do we forget that for the commercials? Um, so the person involved is like said, I snitched to the pastor when I saw her passing out plates of her famous toilet greens. <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was lying and continued to indulge her in her bathroom delicacies. Yeah, that very really reminds me of uh, the, the Labor Day party on. Uh, Married with Children episode. That would have oh, been with the, the with funniest the one with the ashes. And, <laughs> and then his neighbor comes over. And, oh, what, was it? what was their name? Nancy. Oh, and whatever. They come over and he brings a uh, like a salmon. He said, <laughs> Al, could you put this on the barbecue? Yeah, no problem. He turns his back and throws it over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, someone's yeah. mother was in yeah. the uh, But I give you also just... another little sibling, sibling, but actually this was clean. So nice. one, of my, when I, one of my friends used to work for a catering company yep. uh, back in the day when, when we both worked at the, at the bank. And what they used to do is, you know, buy big tins of tomatoes, you know, right. whole tomatoes. And, you know, you need to crush them to make tomato sauce, mm-hmm. right? Make for pasta. So they had stainless steel sinks with an incinerator attached to it with a bucket underneath it. So they poured everything into the sink. The sinks were only used for this Wait, purpose. Yes. Okay. There we go. That's yeah. all right. That's... So that's how they ground them up. It threw an incinerator. And with the, so five pounds went in or five <laughs> gallons and they had a five gallon pail underneath. And that was it. And bang. Thank God it was only used for that. I hope yeah, no, that's in. all it was used for. And I asked him about that. <laughs> he said, no, that's, that's the only thing they use that for. But what an idea. Like if you got to do mass production. Yeah. That's, that's a good idea. Ingenuity. I'll, I love that. See, that's how you're thinking. Yep. That is it. But please, no one think about washing anything in toilets. Okay. Please. So now we just said, usually our section right now, we go to Nat Nosh. We do. It's been replaced. It has. And this is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to say, I, yeah. uh, it's not Australian. Well, I no. mean, I know is this, I said it's not American. It is an Australian phrase. But this, but the third word is. Yeah, the third word. But the first word, ripper. Do you know what he was going to use? What? Stripper? I can't say it. Zipper. Gobbledy cook. And I said, Phil and I can't say that every week. What the hell are you thinking? Oh, Thanksgiving. Have a go. Yeah. So it's a ripper recipe roundup. <laughs> triple R. Yeah, triple R. Right. Okay. So Brendan comes up with with it. So that's where we get the uh, Aussie accent with ripper. Yes. Uh, nobody in America says ripper. You know anybody says ripper? No, Jack the Ripper. And, Jack, uh, nah. That's English. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. Or a seam ripper. That's it. But no, not yeah. ripper. But- so it's a ripper recipe rap- roundup. This is going to be so fun for the next... 12 months. Yes, 12 thank months. you. Okay. So this week. glorious weeks. So basically, it's a concentrated. Nat week, Nosh. Nat Nosh. So, just pick out the best ones for the week instead of going on through all of them. And you get a bonus because we will give out the recipe. Oh, we will. What? Key lime pie is yes. the first one on yes. Thursday is key lime pie day. Yeah, it is. And so here's a recipe for an easy key lime pie. Go to the store and buy one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that and so. I'm going to just, everyone knows how to make a graham cracker crust or a cookie crust. Make that. Mm -hmm. So you put one package of cream cheese softened, one can of sweetened condensed milk, a half cup of key lime juice, which we do have on on the occasion, or lime juice if you can't get the key lime. But I recommend the key lime. Then two cups whipped topping, or you can use whipped cream, but we do have whipped topping if you're local. And lime slices. So in a large bowl, beat the cream cheese until smooth. Beat the heck out of it. Ah! (laughs) Beating the milk and lime juice until blended. Transfer to the crust, refrigerate covered. At least four hours because it will set thick. And just before serving, garnish with whipped topping. Some people put coconut on top. I'm not one of them. But, and if desired, lime slices. There you go. And on Monday, how do we go from Thursday to Monday? Well, this is the following Monday. 
is corned beef hash day. That's one of Jeanette's favorite dishes. See, when she goes to America, she always sets up corned beef hash at one of the diners. Does she? You know, for breakfast. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, does she make it? No. Do you make it? No. <laughs> I make it. You make it. Oh. But I don't always use corn. If I don't have corned beef, if we have leftover ham or something, yeah. I'll make hash. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm just going to give a roughie because these are one of those recipes that you just throw together. This one, some people use hash browns. Or you can use diced roasted potatoes. Oh, okay. So I love those. Yeah. So yeah. I, I do that. So I fry the potatoes up first because I want them crunchy. I throw in garlic. I throw in diced onion. Um, you want – you can do it in butter, which makes it – butter makes everything better, as you know. And then I chop up the meat. Yeah. Usually in squares, depending on what it is. Kick that around a little bit. Now – I season it with what I see. You know how you think when you open the fridge? Right. That's what I do in my spice drawer. Okay. So like a little bit of oregano and yeah. salt and pepper Sorry. and all yeah. those things and how it's smelling and yeah. how it is. This recipe that I'm looking at, they throw in a bit of Worcestershire sauce, mm. which I haven't done, but I'm going to do it next yeah, time. Give it a little bit of kick. Yeah. put that in my soups. Oh, yeah. Yes. That is very nice. And I put in my stew too. And uh, But I'll let it get sort of like almost like a crust. Like mm. I'll let it get really crunchy bits and flip it over. Right. So you flip it over till it's all crunchy and good and done. And there you go. Wow. Now, what can you add to that? Would you? What would you do? To that? Yeah. I don't know. Well, well it'd be better than opening up the tin of uh, corned beef hash <laughs> because it always smelled like... Uh, dog food? Dog food. <laughs> I was... I was thinking of the dog food that we used to give uh, my grandmother's dog, Tootsie, was uh, kennel ration. <laughs> if you remember <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> kennel ration. Kennel ration. I, yeah. It sounds familiar, but I'd have to see a label. Yeah. It was before Alpo because Alpo was a big improvement over kennel ration. <laughs> I think I've told the story before at a St. Mary's football uh, basketball game. Yeah. Some evil children or <laughs> students, when they cheerleaders from the other team came out they rolled cans of alpo across the gym <laughs> there was i think there was was over the pa on the monday we got all got a talking to about that mm-hmm. but yes that's what i think of when i think of alpo okay and next week's show mm-hmm. this will be a lot of fun oh yeah because it's there's no no bad there's no bad no just as long as you have bacon fat you're fine it's fried southern cooking oh yes my favorites are pies and cakes and ingredients. Oh. We have to talk about a little bit about grits. Oh yes, yeah. grits are amazing because some people think it's only breakfast, but it's a, it's, it's a staple. Yeah. Yes, so I think we need Phil to bring in the shrimp and grits or recipe, and we talk about that. Yeah, we'll do that, and uh, yeah, that's about it. And then oh, we are sign off, David Linger, right? Linger? Yes. To be successful. You can't turn up to a potluck with just a fork. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. You got to so, bring the dish. You might get stabbed with the fork you bring. Yeah. So it has a lot of other meanings. So it's, yeah, to be, he starts off to be successful. In other words, yeah. whatever you do in life, just don't go in half, half ass. Yeah. Be prepared. I, I can say that. Right. You yeah. can say that. You can say whatever you like, Phil. Okay. No, I can't. Uh, so <laughs> don't go in half ass. Just, you know, go in and uh, you're going to do something and do it right. And That's then, it. and then leave. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, it was nice seeing you on this very strange day that we yes, had. I feel is. like we should have, I think we should organize a work potluck. Yeah, that's good. I'll bring the pizza oven. Okay. It's portable. Beautiful. Pizza yeah. potluck. Pizza potluck. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be talking next week. And since it's Southern, I'll quote my grandma, my dad's mom. I'll have to think of a Southern pizza now. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Got to put on that. We got the Hawaiian sweet pig we should look at. Ooh. No, that's not sub. That's Hawaiian. No, I'm just saying pizza. I know. Uh, no, no, but my okay. grandma would say, "Yeah, y'all come back now. You hear? You hear? Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Bye." <laughs>